In Creole Parametric, when you are detailing a drawing, you can use either driving or driven dimensions. I get a lot of emails and comments about this, and I just want to clarify a few things. So first off, driving dimensions are dimensions that actually come from your model's features. When you are creating a sketch or an extrude or a revolve or a round or a hole, you're gonna have different dimensions generated from those features. And you can show those driving dimensions on the drawing. There are a number of advantages to doing this. It saves a lot of time and effort compared to creating dimensions manually. And if you create dimensions manually, those are called driven dimensions. So driving dimensions come from your model's features. Driven dimensions are ones that you create manually. One of the advantages to, to using driving dimensions is that they are associative. In other words, if you change a dimension on a drawing, it will update your parts and your assemblies. You cannot change a driven dimension on a drawing. So whenever you can, you should use driving dimensions on a drawing. You should show those driving dimensions. If you take a look over at the image on the right, you can see that there are two different dimensions. One is a radius and one is a diameter. The radius dimension is actually a driving dimension, but the diameter is a created dimension. If you switch symbols, which I'll show in the demonstration, you can toggle a dimension from its numeric form to its symbolic form. And a driving dimension is the letter D followed by a number. In the lower left-hand corner, you'll see that there's a big R followed by a little D. The R is for radius, but D73 is the actual symbolic form of that dimension. For the diameter dimension, you can see that its symbolic form is little a followed by little d. And that is an indication that ad of a driven dimension. So when you have the opportunity, use those driving dimensions. Show those model annotations when you can. Now, the old conventional wisdom used to be at least 95% of the dimensions that appear on your drawing should be driving dimensions. Quite honestly, that recommendation hasn't held up for about the past 10 years or so. I'm going to go through three reasons in this video why that no longer applies. The problem is you'll still hear a lot of people saying that, and you'll see a lot of people you know, sort of like, you know, oh, you're doing detailing wrong if you're ever using any created dimensions. Well, there have just been some advantages, excuse me, advances that have made that no longer practical. Uh, there is also conventional wisdom that you should not change your dimensioning scheme just to show a dimension. So that's correct. If you take a look at the image over on the right, we really might want a diameter dimension in order to use calipers for inspection of that geometry, but the actual driving dimension is a radius dimension. Well, if someone created that model with their design intent and they used a radius dimension, you really should not go back and change it to a diameter dimension. So again, when you can use driving dimensions, but don't change your model just so that you can show a driving dimension on the drawing. Let's take a look at this inside of Creo Parametric. All right, here I am in Creo Parametric. This is the part that I want to detail. So let's create a brand new drawing. I'll click File, New, and then change the type to Drawing. I'm not going to bother changing the file name. I'm not going to use a drawing template. I'm just going to create a drawing using a format. Let's click the OK button out of here. We will use Sheet 1. I want to fill in a bunch of different parameters in the revision block, but I'm just going to skip past that. I can right mouse click and hold and choose to create a general view. I'm not going to use a combination state. Let's locate a view about over there. I happen to know the front view will work for me. And that's good, so let's click the OK button. 
With the view still selected, I can hold down the right mouse button and from the mini toolbar, choose to create a projection view. Let's select the original view and create another projection view. And so that is good for my different views on here. To get the dimensions on here, we can go to the Annotate tab, and I can choose Show Model Annotations. As I showed in another video, there's a drop-down list where you can control what kinds of dimensions that you want. If you wanted to limit it to just driving dimensions, you could do that. But also, the way that I like to detail, I like to just walk down my model tree for the different solid features. I can select this feature over here, and it previews two different dimensions over here. And I can hit the check mark and then click the OK button. And there we see a couple of different dimensions on here. And this one is a radius dimension. For detailing, if I wanted the diameter dimension, maybe I need to manually create a dimension. So I can click on the dimension icon and then pick the geometry that I want. And then move my mouse out over here. You'll notice that it's telling me that I can hold down the right mouse button for other options. So I can choose to create a diameter dimension instead. Let's locate it about over here. From the dimension tab in the ribbon, if I go to display, I can flip it right from here as well and do other alterations to the dimension. But here we have the radius, here we have the diameter. This is a driving dimension. This is a driven dimension. And so, if I go to the Tools tab, you can choose Switch Dimensions, and it'll toggle the dimensions from their numeric form to the symbolic form. And that big R is for radius. The name of the dimension here is D73. Here we have the phi symbol for the diameter. Little a, little d, that indicates that this is a created dimension or a driven dimension. Let's toggle that back. Another way that you can see the difference is I can double click on this dimension and it would actually allow me to change it. You'll notice that I can type in a different value over here. I'm not going to do that in case it might end up blowing up the model. Now I'm going to double click on this dimension and it brings up the ribbon for the dimension. Uh, and here we have the dimension. It's got the name of the dimension and it's grayed out in here because you are not able to change it. It's being driven by the model's geometry. So let's talk about three different reasons why that old rule of thumb of keeping 95% of your dimensions being driving dimensions. Uh, first rule, reason that you can't follow that all the time anymore, top-down design. If you're designing with top-down design, you may be using skeleton models that control a lot of your geometry. And if you're using copy geometry and shrink wrap features in order to communicate that design information from your skeleton into your individual parts, you are not going to have native geometry in those piece parts and therefore you're not going to have the dimensions from the skeleton. Now there is a way of getting annotations into your published geometry, copy geometry, and shrink wrap features, but those are going to be annotations. They're going to be driven or created dimensions, not driving dimensions. For some reason, the annotations that can be included in those different features can only be driven dimensions, but it does allow you to communicate information from your skeletons into your target parts. Okay, here I am in Creo Parametric in an assembly. It's got a skeleton model over here. Let me open this up in its own separate window for a moment. So right now in the default all combination state, you can see that we have some surfaces, some different features in here. If I expand the footer, there's an annotation feature that contains three different dimensions. If I go to the three tab, this one has those actual annotations visible in here. Let me show you uh, what would happen if we create some different dimensions in here uh, as annotations. So I can go to the Annotate tab, and let me make sure I'm in my right combination state. Uh, let's change to, yeah, top should be good. I want to create one for uh, one of the dimensions in the rotors. So let's now go to the show annotations button. 
I'm going to select, let's try selecting the first rotor extrude over here. You can see there are a bunch of different dimensions that are visible. Let's select some of these to show. So I'm going to say, hey, let's grab this dimension over here and this particular dimension over here. And I will click the OK button. And so there you can see the different dimensions on the screen. Let me grab this one and move it a little bit out of the way so it's not interfering with the geometry. So I've just shown two different dimensions. If you take a look, oh, one second, let me turn my highlighting back on. If you take a look in the model tree, here we have the extrude feature, and you can see that we have the driving dimension located underneath here. If I expand the sketch, there you can see another one of the driving dimensions that was just created and shown on the screen. So here we have these two different dimensions. If I go to Tools and then Switch Dimensions, here you can see that this is the D12 dimension from the model. This is the D0 dimension from the model. Let's switch back over here. So these are two different 3D annotations that were created from driving dimensions that are shown here in the model. Let's take a look at creating a, another dimension for this diameter. I'm in, going to indicate that this is a driven dimension. So let me go to the annotate tab. Let's create a dimension. I'm just going to select this edge over here. Once again, I'm getting the radius, but I can right click and change that to the diameter. And let's position it right about over there. And let's add some text in here just so that it's clear that this is a driven dimension. I'm going to write the word driven in here. That's good. And so now we have a few different dimensions on here. This one is driven. This is driving. Once again, if I go to the tools tab and switch dimensions, you can see that AD over there and just a D over there. Let me switch back. Now I am going to locate that dimension over here. Here it is, AD45. You can see how it highlights over there. So now let's go back to the... Actually, while I'm in here, let's try to create a published geometry feature. So from the Tools tab, here we have the published geometry feature. For the surfaces, I'm going to just try to query to get this surface quilt selected. So that's good for that. Down at the bottom here, we have annotations. This allows you to put different annotations inside of the published geometry feature. That way, if anyone copies it, they're going to get that as well. Let me click the edit button over here. Here we have the propagate annotations dialog box. And so I'm hovering my mouse over the model dimension, the driving dimension, and I can't select it. I'm left clicking, nothing is happening. Let's try it for the driven dimension. It's not allowing me to do that. So let me cancel out of here and then cancel out of here and show you one thing about if you want to use a model driven dimension in a published geometry feature. Well, you need to add it to an annotation feature. I'm going to select it over here and this button in the mini toolbar allows me to create an annotation feature. Here it is listed in here. This annotation feature can have multiple different annotation elements in here. Here you can see the references. Oh, we could reference, you know, what does this surface pertain to? We could select this surface as what it is driven by. Lots of different controls in here, but let me just click the OK button out of the dialog box for creating the annotation feature. And there is the annotation feature over here. If you want to, you could move it to the footer, but I'm not going to do that because then it's not going to be available for placing in a published geometry feature. So again, let's click publish geometry. I will again query to get the quilt selected for the reference. Now let's click the edit button. And here we have the propagate annotations dialog box. Hey, this time I can select that annotation element and click OK. And that way if someone clicks, or excuse me, if someone creates a copy geometry feature, they'll get these surfaces and they'll also get this annotation over here. Let me hit the check mark out of there. 
And there we have our published geometry feature. Okay, let's go back to the assembly and see how we can use this. First off, here we have the Chimera body. It doesn't have anything in here. Let's activate it and say that, okay, we want to create a copy geometry feature for making the body. Let's now go to the References tab over here. I'm going to query to this surface set, and now it's selected. We can go to the Edit button, and here we have the Propagate Annotation dialog box. Let me move it out of the way. And I can select these three different annotations over here that are visible on the screen. Let me click OK out of there because these are actually annotation elements in an annotation feature inside of the skeleton model that I'm copying from. So I'll click the OK button and hit the check mark. And now let's open up the Chimera body in its own separate window. So here you can see the copy geometry feature, and that way I can select the quilt over here. I can thicken it if I want to. Let's flip it to the other side. Let's change this to a value of five, and then hit the check mark or the middle mouse button. So that way I've used the copy geometry feature for creating geometry, but I also have these different annotations that I can show in a drawing. And these are driven annotations. Uh, so again, I can't change them. I can't double click on them in order to change the value. They are coming over from the copy geometry feature. All right, let's go back over to the assembly. And you can see that now we can see the geometry for that one in there. Now let's create the component for the rotor. I'll go to create and in the create component dialog box, let's choose to name it Chimera Rotor. By the way, why is this assembly named Chimera? This is my high school mascot. All right, let's click the OK button and then just use the default constraint for locating it and hit the check marks. And there I have my new component over in here. And now here's the body component. Let me now activate the rotor component and create a copy geometry feature. I have a config.pro option set so that the publish geometry option is not turned on by default. Let me select publish geometry and select that publish geometry feature that I created. Now I can hit the check mark out of here. Let's open up the rotor in its own separate window. And now you can see, hey, there we have the value in here. And it look, it automatically converted because my original model was in inches and this one is in millimeters. Hey, let's go about changing the model properties. Hit the change button over here. Let's convert to millimeter newton seconds. And we'll use the convert option. OK, and then close, and then close out of here. And there we have the value of 400. By the way, I'm not getting my trailing zeros. If you want to get the trailing zeros, you can go to your model properties, which I have added to my quick access toolbar. Let's now go to the bottom and under detail options over here, I can change. And underneath these options, control dimensions, Let's scroll down to lead trail zeros and change this from default to standard English. And then add change, apply and close and close out of there. There are now I'm getting my trailing zeros inside of here. But again, you'll notice the important thing is here now with my copy geometry feature, I am getting that annotation element. So again, another thing, top down design, if you want to be able to transfer dimensions from your skeletons to the individual components. They have to be created dimensions, annotation elements, and those annotation elements have to be in annotation features. Why is that required? I don't know, that's just the way that it works. Hey everyone, Dave here. This video ended up being much longer than I had anticipated, so please join us for part two, where we'll talk about two additional reasons why the old rule of thumb about 95% of your drawing dimensions being driven dimensions no longer applies. Thank you very much.